Hey, what's going on guys? This is Matt. And today we are talking about the claw hammer system right behind me. Now this isn't going to be a complete comprehensive re review. I actually already have a review on my YouTube channel. I will link in the video and also in the description down below. This is really just how the system's holding up. I've had this system for three years. So I wanted to go through each component and show you how the wear and tear is going, what parts I had to replace, if any, and my overall impressions of the system. I also want to tell you my favorite part about the system and my least favorite part about the claw hammer system. And at the end of the video, I want to see how this system still compares in the marketplace of Bruna Bag electric systems as it's been three years since I bought it. Uh, there's been a lot of new systems introduced in the marketplace. So we can kind of go over how the system still compares when comparing it to other systems. To now go through the entire system part by part and show you what it looks like after three years of using it and then to talk about if I've had any issues with any components. So the first thing I wanna get out of the way is I haven't had any real issues with the claw hammer system over the last three years. But I do wanna go through and talk about each system directly. The first thing I wanna talk about is the element. So the element overall is working great. The only issue I'm noticing so far after three years is that there's this slight popping noise in the housing of the element. It isn't causing any issues with the element heating on or turning off, and I haven't had any noticeable issues that I've seen so far, but I do notice a slight popping noise in the housing. I don't think it's a huge deal, but I'm gonna look into it more, and if you guys have any recommendations on how to fix the slight popping noise, uh, please let me know in the comment section down below. Now to talk about the kettle and the lid. Now these are really scratched up. I think what I was doing in the beginning of using the system is that I was using an abrasive green scrubby. Also Barkeeper's Friend has abrasives in it which is, can really scratch up your kettle. But overall, besides the scratches, it looks really great. The welds look clean. There's no noticeable rust on the system and you can still read the etchings inside the kettle as well. Now to talk about the baskets. We have the grain basket and the hot basket. Overall, these are also working very well. There's no big issues with these other than browning. Um, it almost looks like rust. It isn't rust though. It's probably just from the malt. Uh, it has turned both baskets pretty much orange where the malt would sit or where the hops would sit. The only thing I want to mention about the bags is that some of the wiring got loose. So when cleaning these, sometimes it can hurt when cleaning these by getting stabbed, but with those loose wires. But besides that, the bags are holding up great as well. Next to talk about the pump. So the pump is working fantastic. I actually opened up the pump today to really dive in and see if there's any noticeable issues. The gasket looks great. The pump looks great and all the internal components look great. So I have no complaints with the pump either. Next, to talk about the brewing lines. Now, there's nothing special about these brewing lines or beer lines, and these have just browned up quite a bit. They look pretty much yellow, uh, so they probably need to be replaced, but overall, they're working fine as well. And lastly, to talk about the controller. So the controller's working great as well. I did have to replace the fuse, which is expected. It did come with those old uh, original fuses that came with all the systems about three years ago. I had to replace the fuse probably about six to eight months ago as it popped during one of the uh, one of my brew days, which kind of uh, threw a wrench in things. There is one thing I'm noticing with the controller and maybe it just comes down to calibration, but I'll notice that if I set my temperature, my mash temp to like 150, sometimes when I take a peek at it, it would be like 147 or 153, um, which is doing like these three point or sometimes four point temperature swings in either direction. I find that a little odd, but again, that might just come down to calibration. To wrap this section up, I wanna talk about my favorite thing and my least favorite thing about the claw hammer system. And my favorite thing has to be modularity. And that's simply just the fact that you can replace components uh, at any hardware store. And if you can't replace them at a hardware store, like the element, um, then you have you could still replace the parts from Clawhammer's website that you could buy the individual parts uh, that you need if there's any issues with it. So I do like the fact that you could swap parts out and it also gives you the chance to upgrade parts if Clawhammer chooses to uh, create more upgrades for the system in the future. For example, upgrading the 120 volt to a 240 volt system, you can do that with this system by just buying the element at the controller. You don't need to buy a whole brand new system. My least favorite thing about the system has to be the hot basket. And I have complained about the hot basket before in my claw hammer review. So make sure to check that out if you haven't done so already and you're considering the claw hammer burner bag system. But the hot basket is just too narrow for a lot of different types of batches. 
So if you're doing anything that really requires more than three ounces of hops, you're gonna start to see hops really pile up on top of the, uh, of the old hops you added in the hop basket. It's just too narrow. You kind of have to push the hops down a lot. So if I had to provide any recommendation to claw hammer or any changes to the system, it would just be to add a wider hop basket so you don't have these hop clogging issues with a lot of hop forward beers. Now to wrap this video up, I wanna talk about how this system compares in the market with electric single vessel Bruna bag systems. As it's been three years since I purchased this system, a lot has come on the market. I do also wanna mention before I get into this part of the video, is I have a comprehensive spreadsheet comparing all electric Bruna bag systems uh, against each other. So if you'd like a comprehensive overview of this, make sure to check the link in the video out or the description, and you can check that spreadsheet out for yourselves. So first of all, I wanna say that this system is the cheapest modular single vessel electric Brunebeck system on the market at $1,000. The two closest in competition with the claw hammer system is the Unibrew system and the Brew Easy Compact from Blickman. When reviewing these two systems, I don't really know why someone would choose the Unibrew system uh, compared to the claw hammer system as from my perspective, they're practically the same system. They're just made by different manufacturers. The only issue is, is the Unibrew system costs $300 more than the claw hammer system. And for $300, you're not really getting a lot of bang for that buck. So over those two systems, I would still prefer the claw hammer Brunebag system. I think currently to date, the Brew Easy Compact from Blickman is the biggest competition with the claw hammer system. The Brew Easy Compact system, the NPT version, costs $400 more than the claw hammer system. And then they have a tri clamp version that is $500 more than the claw hammer system. But unlike the Unibrew system, with the additional dollars, you are getting more features. You're getting features like direct deposit recirculation, flow controllers, a riptide pump, and controllers that have more features. So it's really up to you if you think the 400 or 500 more dollars is worth those types of features. I do still think even with those upgrades, the claw hammer system is a better system compared to the Brew Easy Compact that Blickman offers. I would still consider the claw hammer Brunebeck system a better system overall, just because of the $1,000 price point for entry. But if Blickman does end up lowering the price of this system over the next few years, or vice versa, claw hammer increases the price of their system, I think these two systems are going to be much more competitive. There are two other electric Brunebag systems that are modular, the Brew Tools and the Spike systems, but these are sitting at over $1,700. And since it's $700 more than the Clawhammer system, I don't really think these two systems are in direct competition with Clawhammer just because they're almost double the price. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, leave me a comment. If you use the claw hammer system, tell me how you're enjoying it. I personally love mine. Anyway, guys, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.